Hi there, welcome back to my channel. It's James here. I hope you're doing okay. Um, hi. So, as we all know, these past couple of weeks have been quite intense on many levels. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the recent surge in awareness around the Black Lives Matter movement linked to the death of George Floyd. And uh, I'm sure we've all heard plenty about it. Um, but I think it is important to keep thinking about it. Um, and that's kind of why I've been a little bit withdrawn with my YouTube channel and over the past couple of days with my Instagram, um, trying to work out how I can make a sustainable and significant difference using the small platform that I do have. Um, so, yeah, that is why I haven't been around. And uh, I just wanted to say to all of my uh, black followers, all of my followers who are people of color or who are min minorities, whatever shape, size, uh, I want to let you know that this is a safe space um, and I want to help however I can. So if there's something that you feel I could be doing that I'm not doing, um, I am super open to people reaching out to me and uh, helping me to use my platform in the best possible way. Obviously, I know that this is not people's job um, and uh, I'm doing the work to educate myself as well. So uh, this is a continuing movement, a continuing fight, and uh, it is inspiring and horrifying to watch uh, what is happening at the, in the world at the moment. Just wanted to say that uh, and make sure that uh, people feel supported and loved because you are loved. Um, right, we're gonna get into some plants today. Um, so. I wanted to keep it a little bit light. I had a couple of plant shop uh, reviews set up, uh, but we're going to leave those for a week or so just to kind of, um, yeah, just to give things time. And uh, we'll come, come to them when it feels more appropriate. We're going to do this. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, a rare plant haul. We're just going to look at a couple of plants that I've received um, over the past couple of weeks that maybe have not received the, uh, as much attention from me as they deserve, uh, given everything else that has been going on. Um, so we're gonna give them a moment in the spotlight and we're just gonna uh, drown in some beautiful plantiness for uh, a few minutes, probably longer than you want, um, but there we go, we're gonna do this. So I have five plants here. Two of them are types of plants that I've never had in my collection before, so I'm equally terrified and excited um, and they're both beautiful, so we will look at them in just a second. Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna get started with one that I'm comfortable with, one that I'm confident that I know how to care for. Um, we're gonna go for a Hoya. So this first Hoya is very, very interesting. I'm gonna show it straight to you. This is a Hoya Pretorii. I think I'm saying that right. I have the little label here because Hoya names, I am shocking at remembering. Um, but there we go, Hoya Pretorii. Um, this is she, this is Hoya. Ooh, she's in perlite. She doesn't have any roots yet. I don't know why I'm gendering my um, Hoya cutting. Um, it doesn't have any roots yet and uh, that is fine. It's just a lovely little cutting that I got as part of a trade. Four of these plants, four of the five plants are plants that I received from a trade with uh, an amazing uh, person. Um, so you know who you are if you traded these plants with me. So thank you so much because they are very, very cool, very exciting. This is a very interesting Hoya. I think the most exciting thing, obviously I love the leaves, uh, as we have uh, established throughout many videos at, at this point, I like dark green with my with Hoya, uh, prominent veins and a lovely bit of splash. And as you can see, I mean, the veins aren't incredibly prominent, but I think the kind of ripply effect of the leaf sort of um, compensates for that massively and I just think they're incredible. They're very like uh, lush and beautiful and you can imagine, I, I don't actually know what the growth structure of this, I probably should look up the growth structure. So far I've just researched the flowers, um, but I can imagine it getting very like big and bushy, so we will see. Um, the interesting and exciting thing about this is that the flowers, the guy who traded it with me described them as looking like little yellow chickens and they literally do, so I'm gonna put a picture up of what they look like somewhere here. And uh, yeah, it's very, very cool. Hoya Pretoria, amazing little splash, rooting in perlite, uh, which for Hoya, I think is the best thing. I've had so many rot in sphagnum and not a single one has died in perlite. So although I think sphagnum is amazing for aroids, um, I'm not a huge fan of it for Hoya. I think it's just a little bit difficult to maintain the right level of moisture. It's either a little bit too dry or a little bit too wet. Whereas with perlite, with passive hydroponics, essentially we've got like a little uh, 
little water layer at the bottom and it gets soaked up through the perlite so it keeps it very very evenly uh, damp in there which is very good so yeah i'm excited to watch this one root and grow um, i have not added another hoya to my collection for about two months so super happy with this my my plant acquisition has really slowed down over the past couple of weeks uh, partially due to having no money because of lockdown but partially just because of like I don't know, I've been really enjoying the plants that I have and I've been uh, selling them things on, passing them some things on. Um, yeah, uh, I've been on my Instagram. Uh, some of you might have seen, uh, last week we did an auction in support of um, Black Visions Collective and probably this coming week we'll do another auction. And I'm thinking that the proceeds will go to uh, CUAPB, so no, yeah. <laughs> CUAPB, so Communities United Against Police Brutality, uh, and another charity called Reclaim the Block. Um, but if you have any suggestions for places to donate that money to, please let me know. And I will try and get it sorted for this week or next week. I am the most disorganized person in the world, so if it takes a second to get that sorted, forgive me. It will happen. <sighs> okay, moving on to the second one. So this is an Aroid. Yeah, actually only two out of five of these plants are arrows, which is shocking. Uh, this is a plant, I already have a cutting of this, a very small one, um, but I got another one because I wanted it and because the cutting that I have at the moment is very, very small and it's not rooting super, super well. So I got this one from Eastern Tropicals. This is Raphidophora cryptantha, which is the sort of um, dubia-esque Raphidophora. It's a shingler. I don't actually think it matures out of shingling form. I have not seen a a uh, picture of a plant with the sort of that transition um, in leaf morphology but the cool thing about it is that it doesn't really need to progress because it's amazing as it is. Um, I don't even think the leaves get much bigger than this, obviously they get larger but I saw a, a huge uh, specimen in the Sydney Botanical Gardens. I couldn't get into the greenhouse, they'd shut it off but you could see through the window this huge cryptantha and it was big like in a pot maybe this tall off the floor uh, you can't see how tall that is in a pot maybe this tall off the floor but uh, it was just wrapped around so it was like winding and the leaves are more or less the same size if I'm wrong with that please let me know but I haven't seen any large leaves um, so very very cool it's got those amazing veins on the leaves that sort of sparkly like a crystal like an anthurium crystallinum's um, venation uh, very cool and um, yeah, it's been mounted on a little bit of cork board with some sphagnum and I just love that. It's super, super nice. So I have it hanging at the back of my grow tent and uh, it's liking it at the moment. Um, you just have to be aware. I've, I've mounted things like this before that uh, the moss can dry very, very quickly. So I've been spraying this every day. Just be aware if you are mounting things, obviously they're going to need a little bit more water because there's just so much more uh, area for the humidity to escape from. Lovely plant, Cryptantha. Okay, we're gonna move on to the terrifying ones. These two are plants that I have avoided buying, not, not these specific plants in general. I have been avoiding because I suspected that once I had them, I would not be able to stop and there would be another rabbit hole, um, but it's happened. Uh, these were little extras in a trade along with this Hoya that I did with the, the same person. Um, and they are two begonia, which are my first ever begonia, I think. I don't think I've ever had begonia before. I might have long ago without even knowing what they are, but um, this is these are my first conscious begonia. So let's start with the one that I've seen a lot around social media. Um, I am terrified having them here. I'm terrified taking them out of the grow tent. I have, I just, I'm imagining the leaves melting and dying in this humidity for this short amount of time. So I'm gonna have them thrown straight back in there as soon as this video is done. First one, this is the Begonia amphioxus, and it is quite a large plant. Uh, it's not a cutting, it's got some roots, it's amazing. I mean, probably it is a cutting initially, but um, look at that. It is this like toxic, weird, speckled toad creature thing. I don't know how to describe it. It is interesting and beautiful and just like so surreal. And I feel like I was a little bit desensitized to it, seeing it on social media so much, and then having it in person, it's like, it just doesn't do it justice. It's such a beautiful plant in such 
a manic, bizarre way. And uh, the way the new leaves comes through is super, super cute as well. Don't know if you can see that. Very, very nice. Okay, so that is the first one, that is the Begonia amphioxus. Very, very nice plant. Second Begonia, this is also a beautiful plant, and this is, um, I'll show it to you first, and then I will try and pronounce the name. Oh, that one's a relatively easy one. I thought it was, I was remembering it wrong. This is Begonia cleopatriae, um, and someone said that the, uh, you can't see, it's a little bit floppy, probably from shipping stress, and also because I'm probably doing something wrong and killing it. Hopefully I'm not. Um, the leaves feel quite turgid, so hopefully that's okay. It is Begonia cleopatriae. It has that incredible, incredible marking on the leaves. Um, I saw someone saying it looked like Cleopatra's eyes, which is why it's called that, but I am not sure if that is true because it doesn't really look like eyes to me, um, but it is beautiful nonetheless. And apparently relatively hardy. The, the guy who sent this to me said that it was comfortable in a sort of room, uh, just ambient room humidity windowsill. And, uh, um, I'm, I've got it in the grow tent just in case. But yeah, it's beautiful. I'm so in love with them. Um, and I knew that this would happen. I just think they're beautiful and wonderful. And whenever I've seen the begonia in uh, like the greenhouses at Kew, I've been like attracted to them, but I've kept my distance just in case they infected me with the begonia bug, um, but it's happening. So I don't think I'll get any more for a while just because I want to learn how to care for them correctly but i definitely will be getting more i've already been looking at them on ebay and online shops so it will happen super beautiful so for those of you who've been messaging me trying to get me to uh, get into begonia it's happening let's go for the final one today and this is kind of the this was the actual plant that the trade was focused around so uh these, the begonias and that hoya were extras to the trade, which is ridiculous because I'm playing with this, sorry. Um, because the actual plant that I was trading is insane. And this is one that I never kind of thought I would buy just because the prices are absolutely mad. Um, and if I hadn't had the chance to trade, I probably would not, I definitely would not have gotten one, at least until the price dropped. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have one to play with and to uh, grow and see what happens. Um, yeah, let's, let's just show you the exciting pinnacle plant of this video. Ta-da! So, some of you know what this is. Uh, this is the variegated Monstera adansonii, the archipelago, and it is gorgeous. So this is the plant that I swapped for I, a bunch of plants. This was like quite a significant uh, trade. Uh, which is understandable given the prices that these go for at the moment. Um, I'm mildly nervous. I, I kind of accepted when I traded this plant that uh, the level of white in it might be a problem, um, but I'm still excited to play around with it. So it actually came with uh, three leaves. So this pure white ghost one, which is a little bit scary, uh, was the latest leaf and then it had two leaves with green on them and then one of them broke off so I think it was a little bit damaged at the base anyway uh, but I gently knocked it when I was uh, having a look at it and it just fell off so that is okay it's not a problem um, the roots are still completely fine the nodes are still completely fine the growth point is completely fine so it happened um, yeah, I'm very happy with it. The roots are extremely healthy. Uh, yeah, like I said, the only part that I'm worried about is how the variegation is going to progress through the plant. So I was talking to the guy I traded this with and we were sort of discussing whether you can see that slight green line through the center of the leaf, whether that is going to be enough to maintain that leaf if this one were to uh, die. Because obviously at the moment, this, this green here is, I'm assuming, what is mainly uh, nourishing the plant as well as the little bit of chlorophyll that's inside the stems, the petioles, and uh, the midrib. Um, so this is definitely going to be an adventure. Um, I am anticipating having to potentially cut this plant up and propagate nodes to get uh, as much green out of it as possible. Uh, but that is part of the fun, and I think that that is this this plant is obviously hyped beyond what it is logically worth. So yeah, that is my uh, variegated Adansonii archipelago 
And uh, if you have any tips, if you are growing this currently yourself and you have tips to help it produce more green, not that I think that that's particularly possible without cutting and repropagating, um, let me know. I'm gonna let it produce two or three more leaves just in case something surges out of the stem. Um, but uh, for, you might remember some of you that uh, I had a philodendron strawberry shake a little while ago and the same thing happened. It started putting through all white leaves and it just didn't stop. So I had to cut it in the end and it is just, the new growth is also variegated. So um, it is called the white curse for a reason um, and I may be watching it happen, but we will see. Please uh, keep your fingers crossed that it will be okay. And that is it for today. So these are the five plants I wanted to talk about. Four out of the five came out of the trade, so thank you so much to the person I traded with. They are just wonderful plants and such in such good health, and I hope that the plants that I sent arrive safely. Um, Thank you. If you have any questions, please stick them down in the comments below. If you would like to see updates on all of these plants, check out my Instagram at slugplants, uh, which I update relatively regularly. And um, yeah, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, like it if you want to, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.